In breaking overnight, the guard responsible for people who live in this apartment building in the East Village safe is now under arrest for stabbing a visitor. 10 News reporter Mary McKenzie is there live now. So Mary, take us through how this whole thing happened. It keeps getting uh, layers of strange, I'll be honest, Virginia. So the security guard who works this building and one other in this neighborhood, his name is William. He's here every night. Uh, I just spoke with a resident who says he has a very calm demeanor, very nice man, but he is now accused of stabbing a visitor to this building. So this building is secure, completely secure. To get in, you have to have a key fob uh, or make a phone call and be allowed entry. The man I spoke to who lives here says, People sneak in through this front door all the time, and he suspects that that's what William, the security guard, thinks would have thought happened last night. So here's how this all started and how this became so bizarre. A woman found a man bleeding inside her apartment in this building about 1 a.m. She ran across the hall to a friend's place to call 911. When police arrived, they got the rest of the story that the victim was staying with friends. He was coming here to visit them, but when he walked into the building, the security guard confronted him, didn't think he belonged there. The two men got into an argument that went from the lobby onto the elevator, and that's when uh, perhaps a confrontation, a struggle ensued. We don't know for sure how it happened, but the security guard stabbed that man, the visitor, three times. So the security guard is now under arrest. The victim, we're told, is expected to be okay. Coming up at 630, we did talk with the man who lives inside. You'll hear from him uh, some warnings that he has for other people who live in this building. For one thing, he cautioned the woman who found him inside the apartment to lock her doors. We're live in the East Village. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Thank you, Mary. Happening today, the man accused of killing his girlfriend as she was shielding her little boy will be back in court for a preliminary hearing. Roderick Harris lived with Vanessa Bobo in Lake Murray. The DA says Harris stalked Bobo in their home. He's accused of shooting her in the back after an argument as she protected her five-year-old son who was watching. Harris faces life in prison if convicted. A developing story today. Lawyers for a man violently hauled off a United Airlines flight will speak along with one of the man's family members. Cell phone video shows how this situation escalated. I'm sure she shouldn't have to work tomorrow at the clock. So am I. Dr. David Dow from Kentucky was pulled off the plane in Chicago so that a crew member could get on board. His legal team is holding a news conference today. They've already taken the first step in a potential lawsuit, asking a judge to require all video cockpit recordings and other evidence be saved. Also today, Chicago city leaders will question United, the Chicago Aviation Department and the airport police force about this incident. Several officers involved in the incident have been placed on leave. United CEO has apologized and all passengers are getting compensated for their tickets. But we wanted to know what grade you'd give United for its handling of this situation. The results of our exclusive 10 News Union Tribune poll show that 65% give United an F. You can see the rest of the scores right there on your screen. We also asked about whether San Diegans would fly United in the future. 48% said they would go out of their way to avoid United. 45% said they would just simply look for the lowest fare. 605 new from overnight, an alarming awakening for a man in Lincoln Park. So see the car there? It was right outside his house, on fire, flames bursting through the roof and out the bottom. Our 10 News breaking news tracker was there as the man tried to douse those flames with a hose. Photojournalist Paul Ander explains why firefighters think that fire looks suspicious. This is the scene around 1.30 this morning in the 5100 block of Groveland right off Euclid. This is where a car caught on fire. You can see one of the residents here, possibly the owner, spraying it with a garden hose trying to get those flames out. Fire department has just arrived on scene. Looks like uh, the front end of the car is going to be a complete loss. Unknown what caused it at this point, but the fire department will be investigating. From Lincoln Park, Paul Andrade, 10 News. Now, since that fire started, we've discovered the man with the hose is not the owner of the car. In fact, he told us he doesn't know who the owner is. Today, we'll find out how San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner plans to deal with a $47 million shortfall. The city's retirement system will require more money than anticipated. Retirees are living longer. The system's investment performance has been mediocre. Faulkner will unveil his budget this afternoon during a news conference and then present it to the city council next week. 
Some new information here on how the new vaccination law is affecting vaccination rates among kindergartners. Now, this law, as you recall, makes it mandatory for nearly all school children here in California to be vaccinated. So it's much harder now to get an exemption. At the start of the current school year, the vaccination rate was 95.6%. That's the highest since at least 1998. Public health advocates pushed for this law, but you may remember some parents argue that it violated their rights. In fact, last summer, a San Diego group took that issue to court, but ultimately dropped their lawsuit. Your money matters right now. Tens of thousands of San Diegans are in trouble. They're not in school and they don't have a job. Yeah, 10 News consumer reporter John Horns joins us now with all the money now that may be helping these people out. Helping out a real problem. I mean, not having a job and not being in school can set people down a dangerous path. And meanwhile, cost of living just keep rising. But now there's money flowing in to help at risk San Diegans flip the script. Naomi Moore says life is awesome. I love my job. Like it is so chill, it's so laid back. But it wasn't too long ago that landing a job seemed next to impossible. I was depressed and the um, job searching process was taking like long. She didn't have the credits to graduate high school with her classmates and couldn't land a job. Moore was one of an estimated 43,000 San Diegans between 16 and 24 not in school and unemployed. Who knows where your future will be? And there's a lot of risks out there. There's a lot of bad influences. More now one of those good influences. She's a job coach at the San Diego Workforce Partnership, helping others in the same situation get hired. And I've been in their position, so I know how hard it is to get a job. And her plate is going to get even fuller. The partnership just got a $1 million grant to expand its efforts to help at-risk youth get jobs at places like SeaWorld, the zoo, Biolabs, and engineering firm Johnson Mathy. Today, the nonprofit is unveiling new research called Flip the Script to hundreds of key officials. The report outlines a vision to get another 11,000 of the 16 to 24 year olds hired by 2020. That's something more who is starting college in the fall says could make their lives awesome too. I think I even help people flip their scripts. Now, some key highlights from the research, only 70% of unemployed and out of school 16 to 24 year olds have health insurance and a quarter of the women have children. And this isn't just about getting a job. This mm -hmm. program, which is going to get more money, helps you with interview skills, building a resume. So not just getting this job, but getting jobs in the future. Right, right. And a lot of just life skills. So it's such a great thing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thanks, John.